Good morning. Uh, God bless every one of you this morning. Uh, we we thank y'all for tuning in on the Sunday morning praise. Uh, it's me and Guillermo here. We have a visitor sitting in. And uh, before we get started this morning, let's go ahead and pray. Amen. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord God, to uh, uh, anoint this word that you place in our hearts. Uh, prepare the hearts of those who are listening, those who are driving, those who are who are, who are just listening to the radio, Lord, to, to receive your word. And we ask you, Lord God, to to uh, help us to accept your message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, God bless y'all. I hope y'all uh, open y'all's hearts to this morning's message. Um, we're going to be talking about the simplicity of the gospel, uh, uh, very simple, but, uh, to understand the gospel, we're going to get into it, but I want to prepare your heart to something that you have to really believe in. Amen. And so if you have your Bibles or if you're just listening, uh, I'm going to be going out of Romans chapter one and verse 16 and the word of the Lord reads, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god for salvation to everyone who believes say believes, believes. to everyone who believes believes it says believes. to the jew first and also to the greek amen this is paul the apostle amen and paul is he's saying this statement is a very powerful statement amen he says for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, if you if you know the story of Paul the apostle in his life, in his past, his background, he was a Jewish man. He was a Pharisee. He he was a man of not of knowledge of the word. He was a very spiritual man according to to his background, but he he was persecuting Christians. A man. He he had a, a charge. He had a, 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 a vision to persecute the Christians because he thought they were in the wrong. And so mm -hmm. he murdered many, many believers in the early church. Amen. And so Paul, if you look at his, his background, there's a lot of things he could be ashamed of. Amen. If I look at my background and my past, there's things I'm ashamed of. Come on. Amen. Yeah. And so we all have something that we're ashamed of. And, and so, so does Paul. But Paul says, but there's one thing I'm not ashamed of. He says, and that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. And he tells us why he's not ashamed. Because he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is the power of God. Amen. The power of God comes through only the gospel of Jesus Christ. And man, that's the only way you can activate the power of God to receive miracles, to receive a, a, a new life, or, or whatever the, the, the issue is, it has to come through the gospel. Amen. And man, the power of God is displayed through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The power of salvation, the power of deliverance from sin, and to give a man or a woman a new life. Amen. Amen. And so let me ask you this question. What is the gospel? Amen. Well, to make it very simple, the gospel means good news. Amen. That's what it means. Good news. Amen. Before you could hear the good news, or let me say this in this other way. If, in order for you to receive the good news, you have to receive the bad news first. Amen. And so the bad news is that the Bible teaches and God teaches us that we are sinners. Amen. Is that you are a sinner. Amen. The Bible calls you a sinner. Amen. In Romans 3.23, the word of the Lord reads, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I ask you this question. And to yourself, are you perfect like Jesus? No, amen. There's not one person perfect like Jesus, amen. And so, knowing that shows us, hey, I'm a sinner, I know that, amen. The Bible says in Roman in John 8 34, 
and it says like this in John chapter 8 verse 34 the word of the Lord reads and Jesus answered them truly truly I say to you everyone say everyone everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin amen, amen. the moment you uh, 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 participate in sin you're going to become a slave to it it's like an addiction amen it's addiction once you get hooked on drugs or hooked on, on an addiction it becomes a habit and you become a slave to that habit it's like last week when I shared on, on that parable of the monkey on your back and then once you feed that little monkey he, he's that little monkey's gonna want more of that food amen a man and, and you become a slave to that monkey and so once because we're sinners and it's in our nature to sin and once sin presents itself and you participate you're gonna become a slave to that sin amen the Bible says in Isaiah uh, 59 verse 2 look at the consequences of sin amen it says in Isaiah 59 verse 2 the word of the Lord reads but your iniquities have made a separation between you and and Amen. your God. Come on. See, sin will cause a separation between us and God. If you try praying and you're in sin and you're like, how come God doesn't answer my prayers? It's because you're in sin. God cannot hear a prayer of a sinner. The only prayer he can hear is the prayer of repentance. Amen? That's the only prayer that God will hear from a sinner is a prayer of repentance. Amen? The Bible says, your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear you. Amen. See, because we are sinners, we are separated from God. Amen. We are separated from God. And that separation from God is called death. Amen. It's called death. It's a spiritual death. Amen. It's a spiritual death. And, and you may not understand that. Well, I'm, I'm not dead. You know, I'm alive. I'm breathing. That, that's not the kind of death I'm talking about. Amen. Spiritual death means you have no life. You may be alive, but there's no life. Amen. 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 You're like the, uh, the walking dead. You're like oh. one of those uh, uh, zombies walking around the earth with no life. Yeah. Amen. And, and that's the, the condition of mankind is that they're sinners. They're lost. They're, they're bound through, uh, 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 through sin. They're bound by drugs. They're bound by alcohol. They're bound by perversion. They're bound by greed. They're bound by perversion. They're, they're bound by gambling. They're bound by cheating. They're bound by committing adultery and, and so forth and so forth. And, and, and you can look at your life and see, that, man, this, this is not uh, uh, conceited. This is not fulfilling your desires. Are you satisfied in life? Even though you have all the money you have, drugs that you do, all the partying, drinking, and, and all this, are, are you still, con are, are you fulfilled? Or do you still have a void in your life? That void is what we call spiritual death. There's a separation. Amen. There's something missing in your life. Amen. <clears throat> the bad news is that because we are sinners, we are headed to hell. Amen. And I'm not afraid to, to tell you the truth is that if you are in sin, I don't care if you go to church. Just because you go to McDonald's doesn't make you a, a hamburger. Amen. <laughs> Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're saved. Come on. Amen. You, I know a lot of people in church that they're not saved. Amen. I used to be like that. Amen. And, until you recognize that you are a sinner lost without God and headed straight to hell, that is a danger. Right. What happens when you're driving down the freeway and you see a car coming the opposite way on a one way. What, what, what do they see? 
When someone's driving on the opposite of the freeway, they have signs that says wrong way, right? Yeah. It says you're going the wrong way. And man, and that's the condition of the world. They're headed a wrong way. You're headed to hell. Amen? And, and, and that is bad news. Amen? And, and sorry to bust your bubble, but if you are in sin, that's where you're headed. Amen? See, hell is a real place. Amen? Don't let the devil burn you and fool you thinking it's some kind of fairy tale. Amen. There is a real That's hell. Right. Yes, sir. There is a lake of fire. Amen. The Bible calls it the place of torment. A place of what? Torment. Oh, yes. right. Amen. There's a there's a reality. Amen. And, and and there is a real place called hell. Amen. And the devil doesn't run it. The devil does not operate hell. Amen. He's going to be there too. Amen. And there's going to be suffering. There's going to be torment for eternity. And I know I know you don't understand what that means, eternity, because we, we our, our minds cannot comprehend what eternity means. Amen. We might have an idea, but we don't really know what eternity means until you're in that place. And understand that there's a lot of people thousands and millions or, or billions of people in hell that wish they had a chance to accept Jesus. Right. Did you know that there's more prayer in hell than there is in the church? That's right. Where, where people are in hell praying, God, send someone to uh, uh, reach my loved ones. Right. Amen. And so there's a lot of people in hell that are praying to God, Lord, send someone to reach my my mom, my dad, my sons, my my uncles. There's a lot of prayers in hell. How do I know that? Because the Bible talks about a man that died, and he went to hell, and he he prayed. He told someone. He told he told Moses or Abraham. Abraham, send someone to warn my loved ones about this place. I don't want them to be here. And they said, we, the dead cannot go back and say nothing. They have prophets. They have the Bible. They have teachers. They have people that will reach out to them. And, and this is a warning. And this is a message for you. Is that if you're in that in that place of, of playing games with God, I, I beg you to get right. Repent. Because there is a hell. And there are people there. And I know, because I've been to a lot of funerals where I know that person is not in heaven. And the pastor wants to make it, well, one day we'll see him in heaven. And, and I'm sorry to, to bust your bubble again. If that person was living in sin and he died in sin, I, I, he's not in heaven. Amen. If his life was all streets and gangs and, and drugs, alcohol, he, he died from a you know, uh, uh, liver busted or whatever. And you're going to say he's in heaven? Amen? And and, and, and this is the, the word that you need to know is that if you die without Jesus, you will wake up in a place called torment. Amen. And, and I know that a lot of people are praying for you to receive this message. Amen. Can you say that's bad news? That's, ba that's bad, bad news. news. Now, I want to give you some good news. Amen. Now you can appreciate good news. Amen. The good news is that Jesus died for our sins on the cross. Amen. That's simple. The good news is that Jesus died on the the cross for our sins. If you have your Bibles or you're just listening, I'm going to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I think Gedmo has a few scriptures from this one Amen. too. Amen. But it's okay. Amen. 
the Bible reads, look, look at these words. This is the same Paul. The Paul that says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Same Paul. He says, For I deliver to you, in verse 3, For I deliver to you as of first importance. Why does it say of first importance? Because this is the, the first thing you need to know. Amen. This is the, the main thing. If you go to church, this is the main thing you need to know before you go to church. Amen. I deliver to you as a first importance. Look what he said. What I also receive that Christ died for our sins. Jesus paid the price. Jesus, when he was hanging on this cross, and you know the story because it's, it's been around. When Jesus was hanging on this cross, he was bleeding. You couldn't recognize who he was. The Roman soldiers put a, a whooping on Jesus. Amen. They were professional executors. They knew how to torture a body to the point of death without them dying. And so they had Jesus beaten, unrecognizable. His beard was, was pulled out. Amen. He was nailed to a cross in his hands and in his feet. They put a crown of thorns on his, on his head and they hung him on the cross. And all he did that was for your sins. The things you did. The things I did. Amen. Amen. You have to understand this, that Jesus died for your sins so that you don't have to pay for your sins. Amen. That's good news. Amen. Is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. See, Jesus overcame sin on the cross through his blood and he overcame death through his death on the cross and when he was buried he put the the sin in the ground is buried Amen. you cannot bring it back and when he rose from the dead is where you have the power of new life it's called resurrection power Amen. it's resurrection power where God has the power to change your life. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8. This is one of my my uh, uh, top favorite scriptures. Amen. I always say I have. This is my favorite scripture. But in Romans 5, 8. I'm, I'm, I'm about finished. Amen. It says, but God demonstrates his own love towards who? Us. Us. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's a beautiful picture. Where us sinners, I, I, I use this when I, I teach a lot of men and women that struggle with drug addiction, alcohol addiction. And I, and I tell them this, that when we were doing your thing, scoring dope, Stealing, you know, uh, the things we do when you're on, when you're trying to get another fix, man. Because we're when you're a drug addict, you do anything to get drugs, amen. And there's a lot of shameful things we did to get our drugs. And the Bible says, while we were not even thinking about Jesus or thinking about God, Jesus was already thinking about us. See, when Jesus died on the cross, he was thinking of you. He was thinking how much he loves you and how much it is worth dying on the cross. Amen? Amen. Because, because you're worth something. Did you, did you know that, that you're worth something? Amen, man. You, I know people may tell you you're not worth of nothing. Amen? You're not even worth of, what is that, uh, dog? Uh, uh, droppings, amen. <laughs> amen. I'm trying to keep it uh, uh, little, uh, 
decent, a man. <laughs> where, where people say you're, you're worth of nothing, a man. You're full of, you know, baloney, and a man. And so, but Jesus says, no, you are worth something. Okay. And God says, you're worth so much that I'm going to come into this world as a man. And I'm going to die on a cross to save you from our sins. Amen. So the good news is this. Is that if you believe in Jesus and what he did on the cross. That he died for your sins. He was buried in a tomb. And on the third day he rose again. You will be saved from your sin. Amen. And you will experience the power of God in your life. Amen. In Romans 6, 23, the word of the Lord reads, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The good news. Amen. This is the good news. See, why was Paul the apostle not ashamed of the gospel? Why did he say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel? Why? Because the gospel is the truth. Amen. The gospel is the truth. And the Bible says, and the truth will set you free. Why was Paul the apostle not ashamed of the gospel? Because of the simple yet powerful message. Is that Jesus forgives you of all your sins. Amen. Amen. Why was Paul the apostle not ashamed of the gospel? Because of the simple yet powerful message that Jesus saves us from sin, from death, from going to hell, and he gives us a new life. That's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because so much comes from the gospel that I cannot be ashamed of. Amen? What was Paul's secret to success? And, and this is what I really want to hit. What was Paul's secret to his success in, in, in his ministry? Why was Peter, John, James, uh, Jude, all these other apostles, why were they all so bold for Jesus? Why, what made them go to the point of death? Say, no, I will die for this message. What made them go that far? Is that they believed in the message. They believed in Jesus. The reason why you're not willing to uh, uh, humble yourself and surrender to Jesus or to give your all to Jesus because you don't believe that Jesus died for you. He's just knowledge. He's just another story that you tell kids. And man, you don't believe it. You say he exists, but you don't believe him. It's like Christmas. You take your kids to see Santa Claus, knowing that he's not real. Amen? Yet you, you have this, oh, the, but the kids will, no. No, you have to believe that Jesus is real. Amen. That what he did on the cross is real. And that he loves you. He died for your sins. And he buried them. And he has the power to give you a new life. Amen. See, Paul knew what Jesus did for him. I knew what Jesus did for me. Amen. I grew up in church. I grew up with, with my parents were, were was a pastor. Amen. And I grew up in a godly home, if you want to say. But just because I grew up in a godly home doesn't mean I knew God. My heart was distant from God. Amen. And and I became a drug addict at the age of thirteen, smoking weed. And then uh, going into uh, cocaine, smoke, uh, smoking cocaine, I never snorted it. And then that led me to smoking crystal meth. And little did I know that my life would begin to go downhill. At the age of 17 years old, in 2005, I was down and out. I was suicidal. I was hooked on drugs. I lost the trust in my loved ones, my mom, my dad, my friends. No one could have trusted me. I was still from him every chance I had. I was still from my own grandmother. I was still from my own church. And, and, and I was in a bad place. But when I called on the name of Jesus, I was in my room. It was about 1, 2 in the morning. I was high as you could be. I was up for two weeks straight. 
And I begin to say, man, God, what is going on in my life? I'm not happy. I'm not content. I have all these drugs. I have a, 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 um, a, a friend. I have a, a, a beautiful girlfriend. I have all these things, but I'm miserable. I'm tired. And I don't know what to do. And I begin to tell God, Lord, if you are real, change me. And in that moment, I experienced the power of God in my life. Amen. And I've never been the same since. God touched my life. And, and he touched me where, where I began to weep and cry. And I fell asleep crying that night. But when I woke up, I was a new creation. Amen. I knew God did something. I had the desires of drugs. The desires of my old life was just gone away. That's the power of God. And you can experience that today. Amen. I want to let Gedmo share a few moments. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that uh, testimony, Mikey, of your, your personal life. Uh, sharing it with the believer. I know that by our testimony, we overcome the wicked one. Let me pray real quick. So cause we're going to continue to talk about the gospel and it's going to get interesting. Say interesting. 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 Amen. Um, let me pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. I thank you for this revelation of your gospel. You speak, Lord. You're the life changer. You're the life say You're the savior, Lord. You're the redeemer. I'm just your messenger, Heavenly Father, and we need you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, turn with me to, if you're physically able, I'm talking to the listener. Uh, if you're not driving, if you're at home, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Mikey touched on this. Um, but I want to I wanna touch on this more. Because I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going to move from this verse. Amen. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to start at verse 3 and 4. And then I'm going to jump up to 1 and 2. But starting at verse 3. Paul the Apostle is writing to the Corinthian church. The Holy Spirit is writing to the church today. And it says this. The words of, uh, of Paul the Apostle. For I delivered to you first of all. That which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised again the third day according to the scriptures. And there's another version of the Bible, because I'm reading out of the New King James, that says this in verse 3. For I deliver to you of first importance, which I also received, or utmost importance, which I also received. Why is the gospel of utmost importance? And Mikey talked about this. Because it's the fundamental foundation block of every Christian believer. Amen. So I delivered to you, first of all, that which I received. I have a question to ask the listener. When you wake up in the morning, before you brew your coffee, before you wake up the kids... Is the gospel of Jesus the first thing on your heart? Amen. Is your Lord and Savior the first thing on your mind? Do you wake up daily and the first person that you give reverence to is Jesus Christ? If your answer is no, it should be. Amen. Sometimes I wake up and I forget to revere God for who he is in my life. And I get busy and I know that there's ministry because I'm in full-time ministry. Maybe you have a full-time, of course, you have a full-time job uh, or you're a full-time student and you neglect praising God the first thing in the morning. I want to I wanna ask you, spend some time with Jesus in the morning. Make it your first priority and watch God become more real in your life. Watch the gospel of Jesus be more real in your life. Take two minutes. Take Five minutes. If you have the time, take 20 minutes with God in the morning and give him glory, which he deserves. Amen. I believe that Paul the Apostle understood this. I believe that after Paul the Apostle was saved by Jesus Christ and he had an encounter, he never neglected a day that he didn't give praise to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, so that's why he writes to the Corinthian church. This is the most important thing. For I deliver to you, he's saying, I'm bringing to you what I received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Amen. Amen. And this is where it gets interesting. You ready? It's going to get awesome. Um, 
follow me as I explain this to you. This is going to sound a little profound to some of the listeners, but God gave me this revelation of a few, maybe like a year ago. I've shared this message here at our church, but I'm sharing it with you today. Please, please understand what I'm about to say. I'm going to back it up. Uh, I'm going to qualify it with scripture. Amen? Amen. But God showed me that Paul the Apostle played college football. Amen? <laughs> that, that sounds funny. Just bear with me, please, as I explain to you. Let's read this again. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. You ready? For all my football fans out there, you're going to love this. 1 Corinthians 15, starting at 3. For I deliver to you, I deliver to you that which I also received, that which I also received to receive something means to take possession of Paul. The apostle was a wide receiver. If you know the function of a wide receiver in a football team, what is it? His function is to receive the ball. And to take it to the end zone. Amen? Amen. The goal of the wide receiver is to rack points for his team by receiving possession, to take possession of, of the ball. Uh, Paul the Apostle took possession of the gospel and delivered it to us. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. You know, like some old legendary wide receivers were my football fans at. Uh, some of my personal favorites. I like Chris Carter from the Vikings. Come on, somebody. I like Calvin Johnson. Very old school. He used to switch the ball from one hand to the other, which most coaches, they, they, they tell you not to because it, it, it gives room for somebody stripping the ball from you. Yeah, Calvin Johnson did this on a regular, and he was a beast, and he has many receiving yards. Uh, to, what about Terrell Owens from the 49ers? Uh, <laughs> At Randy Moss from the Vikings, one of my personal favorite. I've seen Randy Moss catch impossible catches in double coverage. Blow me away. He, blow, he blows me away. But my all-time favorite was Jerry Rice from the 49ers. And I do believe, statistically speaking, he has the most receiving yards of any wide receiver. Amen. And that's just, you know, I'm having fun here. But, but Paul the Apostle out received every one of these guys amen he was a better wide receiver than every one of these guys check it out first corinthians 15 verse 3 for i delivered to you first of all that which i also received paul the apostle delivered the gospel to the entire world nobody out receives paul the apostle amen maybe you can today Jesus did say, greater and mightier things will you do in my name to you who believe, like Mikey said. And I'm going to get there too. But keep reading. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. What was it so important that Paul the Apostle received? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. This is the building block. This is the foundation block of Christianity. Jesus is the chief cornerstone which the builders rejected. We see it all day in our modern day uh, life, in our nation, around the world. Nobody accepts Jesus Christ as the Messiah anymore. Not even his own people. Not all of them, uh, uh, as far as I know. Uh, not even some of the Jews receive and believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. If you're not part of that group, I'm not targeting any specific person. Amen. I'm just saying the world has rejected Jesus. The world has rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it is the most important thing that we as believers need. We need a revelation from the cross. It's where we stand on. Check this out. I'm going to back up more. That Paul the Apostle played college football. Probably at the rabbinical school. I don't know where. Amen. The rabbinical school of Ohio. <laughs> Amen. Look. Go to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1. Check it out. Of Damascus. Uh, right? <laughs> of Damascus. Amen. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I, I declare to you the gospel, which I preach to you, 
which I also received. There it is. He received it. He took possession of. And in which you stand. Correct me if I'm wrong. But unless a wide receiver is standing, he's not in play no more. Amen. Uh, you got to stand on the gospel. Paul the Apostle was God's wide receiver. Amen. Check this out. By which you stand, it's, it's going to get better. By which also you are saved, right here. If you hold fast the word. What does a right receiver do? He holds the ball. Amen. Paul the Apostle is schooling the wide receivers of today. Because if I'm not mistaken again, if you lose possession of the ball, you're no longer in play. Amen. And, 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 and you know, um, rhetorically speaking, I don't know if football was invented back then. I don't believe that Paul the Apostle really played college football, but it sure does sound like it. Amen. And he's telling the church today that I'm declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. He's telling the Corinthian church. Jesus is telling the believers today, you need to receive the gospel. You need to stand on the gospel and you need to hold fast the gospel because the lying devil and his boyfriend are trying to strip the gospel from you. Amen. I'm going to say that again. The lying devil wants you to lose possession of the gospel. Come on, somebody. Why has the world compromised the gospel today? Amen. Even in these last days, huh? it's not getting any better. People kill freely. I think I heard on the news another shooting at a radio station or I'm not sure where was it. And it hurts me and it irks me that I see the, the devil running rampant through our nation. Amen. Our own country allows gay marriage. And I'm not against homosexuals. Please don't get offended. I love you guys. My unction is to reach out to you too. But there's right in God's eyes and there's wrong in God's eyes. Amen. Why have we compromised the gospel? I love you so much. I'll tell you the truth that what you're doing is wrong. I won't criticize you. I won't treat you littler than anybody else, but I will declare the gospel to you. Amen. Amen. Let me give you an example of why, why that's a compromise of God's ways. Why don't we just welcome murder then? Amen. Why, uh, we condone gay marriage. Well, then let's condone murder then. Huh? Why don't we do that as a nation? Because it's wrong. Well, gay marriage is wrong too. Lesbian marriage is wrong too. Please, I love you. I'm not against you, but I will tell you the truth. Amen. I will stand on the gospel. Amen. Uh, I'll buy you dinner and I'll tell you the truth. Amen. <laughs> you can be my friend, but I'll tell you the truth. Amen. I love them enough. I, I stand on that gospel. Mikey, my friend Rudy's here with us. Rudy, I, that's the gospel which I will not let the devil take away from me. Yeah. Jesus has given you possession of the gospel. Huh? What are you going to do with it? Don't tolerate sin. Look at Paul the Apostle declaring to the Corinthian church through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the ex-Christian killer like Mikey said. He's saying, brethren, in 1 Corinthians 15.1, I declare to you the gospel. He says, I'm shouting it to you. All I live for is to tell you the gospel, which I preach to you, which you also received and in which you stand. I'm asking that believer, maybe you're struggling out there. Get back up. Maybe you fumbled the ball. Get back up and stand for the gospel. Maybe you went through a divorce. Get back up and stand for the gospel. Maybe you lost your children to CPS. Get back up and stand for the gospel and watch Jesus come through. But I'm, I mean, really stand for the gospel. Don't play church like Mikey said. Don't make Jesus your last option. And then you go back to your wicked ways and then you build up a wall towards the gospel of Jesus. I'm talking about standing for the gospel. It, it, it's going to I'm going to end it with this because I only had a little bit to share. And, and I want the, the listener to know. That when me and Mikey come and share on the radio, we don't get together prior to the time we share and, and share notes 
And so I know that it's the Holy Spirit that's going to speak to you when I share this last part because Mikey touched on it too. Amen. The only thing that will cause you to lose possession of the, of the gospel is that you don't believe. Amen. Watch, watch what Paul the Apostle tells the church. I'm going to start back at 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, and in which you stand, by which you are also saved, because believing the gospel is unto salvation. If you hold fast that word which I preach to you, and here's where I wanted to get to too, unless you believe in vain. Unbelief is a Christian killer. Huh? Unbelief will strip the gospel from you. Maybe because you focused on man. Maybe the church hurt you. Maybe the, the pastor that you knew wasn't as holy as you thought he was. He's just trying to make it too. He's just a follower of Jesus too. Uh, or maybe you have a critical spirit where you just looking for every reason to not believe whatever it might be unbelief will take possession out of your hands of the gospel of jesus christ the moment you stop believing you put your walls down and you give room for the demonic to invade your territory your household church stand on the gospel amen stand on jesus christ you will never go wrong standing on Jesus Christ. I was in and out of the ministry. I was in and out of the churches looking for answers in people, looking for answers in vain prayers, repetitious prayers. But when I opened my heart to the gospel, me personally, Guillermo, when I opened my heart to Jesus Christ and I started to believe, I have never fumbled the, the, the ball. I have never fumbled the possession of Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect and my walk is not perfect, but God is. Amen. And I choose today to stand on that gospel that I have received. And I choose today to deliver it to the world. Amen. I'm going to be God's wide receiver today. Amen. And you can take that to the bank and you can deposit it because no one dethrones Jesus. The gospel of Jesus never loses power. Amen. That's all I have to share today. Please have a revelation of the cross. Whatever condition or circumstance you're in, Jesus wants to help you. Like Mikey said, that touched my heart. Jesus thinks you are worth dying for. Amen. We thank you guys um, and ladies for uh, listening in with us. Um, and we're, we're here to preach the truth. Amen. We don't want to sugarcoat the gospel man so every time we have the opportunity to share the word of god it will be bold and it'll be raw and it's gonna be the truth amen? amen because that's what we need amen i'd rather you tell me the truth than lie to me Come on. amen and so uh we're, we're gonna tell you the truth because we love you guys amen we don't want my heart and i don't get my heart is is we want people to get saved amen, amen. we want you to experience the gospel we want you to experience the power of God in your life, to break any chains, any shackles in your life. And if you feel that you are, are bound by any kind of, of sin or any kind of addiction, I want to say a prayer with you. And if you just believe in this simple prayer, Amen. God will break chains in your life. Amen. Amen. And I want to say this prayer with you. And, and I ask you to uh, say it with, with a truthful heart. Uh, believe in his prayer, amen, and if continue to pray, amen, uh, say this prayer with me, amen, simple prayer, say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I recognize, I recognize, I am a sinner, I am a sinner, and I need you, and I need you, in my life, in my life, I ask you, I ask you, to forgive me to forgive me for all my sins for all my sins i believe i believe you died on the cross you died on the cross for me for me i receive you i 